reply to some texas newspapers about socialism april sixth eighteen fifty five by victor considerant eighteen hundred eight to eighteen ninety three from european colonization in texas an address to the american people published in eighteen fifty five this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org reply to some texan newspapers i had completed this document when my attention was directed to certain articles in some texan newspapers concerning our projected establishment in that country i here present one of those articles containing a most severe attack Quote, we are always pleased to have industrious immigrants come among us Plenty of work can be found by mechanics and laborers, and there is room in all our towns for more enterprising merchants and businessmen. There is one class, however, that we are opposed to, and have no disposition to hold out to them inducements to settle among us. This class is of that propaganda school which in France and in parts of the United States has and is seeking to sap the foundations of society. The socialist desires to destroy individual rights and property, and if he is not a very intelligent and moral man, a rare thing, we may have in him a neighbor who will rob and plunder us whenever he can get the chance for he holds it as a primary principle in his creed that no individual has a right to accumulate property for himself and all above what is necessary to sustain him belongs to the rest of society again the socialist is an abolitionist everywhere he would not be less opposed to slavery by living in texas than in france or in ohio it is part of his creed. Now we are told that John Allen of Ohio and Monsieur Victor Considerant propose bringing out from France to western Texas a colony of socialists. This move for the purpose of building up a sect opposed to our political institutions may well be regarded with a jealousy and the founders may rely upon it that they will not be suffered to tamper with our institutions the whole principle of colonization where men of a peculiar caste in religion or politics seek to array themselves together in particular sections of the country both as landholders and factionalists is at war with all the elements of society and cannot be carried on without creating bitter and unrelenting prejudices and animosities among our native citizens we note this advent of socialism in texas as foreboding us no good and we wish them to have a fair understanding before they reach our soil that as a political sect our whole people are against them End quote who could have thought us worthy of such amenities why are we so precipitately attacked by persons to whom we are entirely unknown and who have been informed of our projects only by vague rumors in regard to this i must confess my ignorance i am only certain that i by no means anticipated such an expression it is not in this tone that i supposed the texas newspapers which ought to represent the interests of the country would celebrate our arrival the mystery may be explained on different suppositions i will consider only two first is it a crusade of private interests the nature of which i cannot comprehend for it seems to me that our establishment in texas must be favorable to every class of persons whatever organized to incite public opinion in texas against us 
and will it succeed in the attempt in that case our course is clear we do not leave the theater of european struggles to seek a theater for other struggles in texas we come into this country because we expect to find in it liberty and peace and so far from wishing to call forth any opposition by meddling with the questions which are agitated in the union we could have wished a remote and uncultivated locality for our establishment which should enable us to devote ourselves entirely to the internal concerns peaceable and inoffensive in their character of our colonization if then we must encounter opposition in texas if we cannot be even received with a fraternal welcome our course is already decided we shall go elsewhere yet to hear the austin gazette would it not seem as if we intended to make an assault on texas but let it not be alarmed we have neither the desire nor the power to do so it utters a cry of alarm as if the states were threatened with an invasion of barbarians nevertheless i trust i shall give no offence by the remark for it is true that if a comparison were instituted between a mass of the present population of texas and the average of our immigration in point of civilization of refinement of ideas and manners of respect for the rights of others the advantage i doubt not would be found decidedly with the latter but however this may be the civilized population of texas should not regard us as a horde of barbarians nor tremble for their property as if we were about to trespass on it or for the very foundation of their society which we have no wish to overthrow we are too mild barbarians to wish to disturb anybody and too little enamoured of strife and controversy to seek for occasion to quarrel on the soil of texas if then the inhabitants of texas led away by absurd fears or impelled by secret interests shall look upon us with an evil eye we only ask for one thing namely that the question shall be promptly decided so that we may be able as promptly to betake ourselves elsewhere we shall not fail of a suitable locality or a kind reception either in north america or in central america we should greatly regret to give up the idea of texas whose name had already become for us the name of our country but we are not the persons to supplicate admission at the door or to enter a dwelling against the will of its owner second is the unfriendly reception which the austin journal and some others have attempted to force upon us merely the result of an error i strongly incline to this supposition and in that case as an old french journalist i implore my texan brothers to permit me to enlighten them paper may be written on in america as in europe but i have always thought it the duty of an honest press when ink has flowed in behalf of error to make it flow in behalf of truth let us see then you say in the first place that we are the enemies of the right of property because we are socialists and hence you conclude that the people among whom we settle will have thieves for their neighbors here are two heirs one of fact the other of logic heir of fact suppose you read in a newspaper the following lines a considerable importation of beasts from europe into texas is announced texans be on your guard these european beasts will devour you if you permit them to enter your territory you would doubtly reply we had better know before arming ourselves what these beasts of europe are there are beasts in every country but everywhere some are good as well as some bad oxen sheep horses etc are beasts as well as lions tigers and rattlesnakes 
this is what you might justly say to your compatriot i reply to you with equal justice that precisely as there are different kinds of beasts in europe so there are also on that continent different kinds of socialists there are especially socialists who deny the right of property and those who recognize it as honestly as you can do yourselves now it is the fact that the socialists whom you attack in us are precisely of the class which has always recognized the right of individual property and who have even maintained long controversies both orally and by the pen against the socialists who deny this right in order to prove to the latter that they were in the wrong so far then from being as you assert enemies of the right of property we are not only the friends of that right but we have been and still are its defenders and champions i have thus clearly pointed out the error of fact which you have committed through ignorance very excusable doubtless in texas of the history and the diversities of doctrine of the european socialists in saying of us in austin they are socialists therefore they are enemies of the right of property you reason exactly as if a paris journal should say of the inhabitants of louisiana and texas they are americans therefore they are abolitionists you would smile at this permit us then to smile for the same reason air of logic you say in substance the socialists do not allow to the individual the right of possessing and accumulating property hence except in cases of very rare morality their principles must lead them to rob and pillage their neighbors whenever they have the chance thus from the fact that a man does not believe in the right of individual property you conclude that he must necessarily vindicate that right for himself at the expense of others seizing the property of his neighbors even by the most outrageous means robbery and pillage this is thoroughly false as is proved by the case of the communists who are precisely the sect of socialists that deny the right of property but who are yet to say the least as honest men as most of the world does the french colony established at Novou inspire their neighbors with fear are its members regarded in the country as thieves and robbers every one will tell you that although communists as a general thing they are the most honest men in the world the communists among themselves put their property in common this is their right if they please to do this it is no concern of ours in the united states there are ten other communist establishments among them are found german communists american communists shakers rapites perfectionists etc these men are nowhere regarded as thieves the communists preach community of goods and freely practice it with each other they do not preach that they have a right to the property of those who are not communists and they respect this as scrupulously as anybody but enough on this point i believe that i have satisfactorily shown one that the socialists who condemn individual property which is the opinion of the early christians are not necessarily thieves two that the socialists of the phalansterian school so far from rejecting the right of an individual to possess and accumulate property have always defended that right inherent in man as the principle of individual liberty and of social progress against those socialists by whom it is rejected i can with most perfect sincerity assure the austin gazette that if we establish ourselves in texas we shall demand but a single thing namely that our property and rights 
be as scrupulously regarded by our neighbors as theirs will be respected by ourselves you apply to us the epithet abolitionists because we are socialists i will even say that you hurl this word at us like a cannonball knowing the offensive and irritating character of this appellation at the south the use you hasten to make of it against us before knowing us is hardly charitable but have you not perhaps committed as great an error in applying to us the name of abolitionists as in metamorphosing us into the adversaries of property nay even into thieves let us look into this if we had now to explain to you for the first time our principles in regard to abolitionism you might suppose not knowing that we are men of veracity that we disguise our opinions in order to conciliate the favor of the southern people but this is not the case although with a less degree of excitement than in america and for obvious reasons yet the question of abolition has been agitated in france it was discussed in the time of louis philippe on the one side were the colonies slave colonies on the other the ideas of enfranchisement current in paris not only in the bosom of the most advanced parties but even in the conservative and governmental party itself well then although we belong to the party of progress and had everything to gain as regards our popularity by loudly demanding the abolition of slavery and using all the fine phrases that were suitable to the subject we had no fear of compromising our reputation not only by refusing to join in the chorus of our abolitionists but by showing in a hundred articles which we wrote on the question that the abolitionists were in the wrong path in pursuing this course we are not only disinterested but we even acted contrary to our interests and why do you think that we took this side because we are men of sense and reason because we do not belong to that family of theorists who cry out perish society rather than a principle because if abstract principles have their rights in the human mind social facts also have their rights in the practice of life and because we think it better to make an abstract principle wait at the door of the practical than to throw open the door at the risk of a great catastrophe this discretion of judgment this prudence this spirit of conciliation between the demands of pure reason and the grave necessities of fact is so characteristic of our school that fourier whose pregnant discoveries we have undertaken to develop without denying his ability to err did not regard emancipation as a social good unless it proceeded from the will of the masters and condemned nothing with more vehemence in the philosophers and political abolitionists of the first french revolution than their conduct toward saint domingo and the terrible massacres which it occasioned and certainly if the emancipation demanded by the abolitionists could be realized in the smaller colonies as martinique and guadeloupe without leading to consequences as fatal as in st domingo we think that in a field so vast as that of the southern states the same question assumes formidable proportions for my own part i do not hesitate to say that i should regard any great measures of abolition in the present state of american society even if they could be introduced without dissolution of the union and the most dreadful civil war as the greatest calamity that could now fall upon the united states i am here forced in spite of myself to do that from which i had wished to abstain for reasons stated in my address i mean the speaking on a question purely american 
I have friends both among the abolitionists and among the slaveholders. If they are at war on the question of slavery, I am no more accountable for it than America is accountable for the introduction of slavery, this introduction having been effected contrary to the will of the Americans, by the will of the mother country. My friends of the North, then, will permit me not to join them in a league against those of the South, and those of the South will excuse me from taking sides against my friends of the North. I am perfectly aware that in itself slavery is a great evil. Every thinking man, as well at the South as at the North, sees in it a dangerous stumbling block to the Union, and a sore spot in the social institutions of America. But there are many other evils and many other sore spots besides slavery in civilized society. For my part, I have found in more respects than one the condition of the free black at the North, and everywhere I may say in Europe and even in America, that the white who is free only in pretense, but really the slave of ignorance, of degradation, of wretchedness and vice, more deplorable, more painful, more completely at war with the abstract principles of pure human right than that of the black slave at the south. And I have often contended in Europe against our abolitionist philanthropists, who show so much anxiety for the fate of the black race, and so little for that of the pariahs of white civilization, who die of hunger in the streets of our great industrial cities, and even in the country also. I am of opinion that, with the scientific and peaceful progress of the age, with the development of the social relations of humanity, America may expect the improvement of her social institutions. But I do not think that she ought to demand this by violent, sudden, and revolutionary measures. In fine, I believe it desirable for the interests of the colored race and of its future that the evils of slavery should not be increased by an addition of peculiar gravity and danger, that of a war excited by this question between the North and the South. This war, for our part, we do not intend in any way to promote, whether we establish ourselves at the North or the South. Such are the feelings which we cherish. If such feelings are dangerous to the tranquillity of Texas and threatening to her constitution, we ought undoubtedly to abandon our purpose of settling in that country. But they never were regarded by us in that light. Otherwise, we should never have thought of taking up our residence in a state where slavery is sanctioned by law. I still hope that intelligent and reasonable men, of whom I wish to believe that there is a great majority in Texas, and among whom we must reckon the journalists, whose function it is to diffuse light and truth in the community, will take the same view of the subject which we have undertaken ourselves. We cheerfully appeal, therefore, from the rash judgments of the Austin writers and of their friends to public opinion at large, and to the more correct information of those writers themselves. V. Considerant, New York, April 6, 1855 End of Reply to Some Texas Newspapers About Socialism by Victor Considerant 1808 to 1893